So my name is Ben Chamberlain. I'm at Imperial College London and also ASOS.com, which is a British e-commerce site. I'm going to be talking about neural embeddings, but uh, this time in hyperbolic space. So my poster is over there. Thanks to everyone that came and had a look at it earlier. It was actually my second go of making a poster. And my first go uh, went like this. I sent my paper to the printer instead of my poster. There's a lot of good ways to spend hundred pounds in London, but printing out your paper in A1 is not one of them. Uh, it's really nice to be talking after Brian because I read his paper pretty uh, recently after he published the Deep Walk paper, and it's pretty much the, the prototype for what I've done. So I've taken Brian's idea, and what I've, what I've done is I've changed the geometry of the embeddings. Uh, so in, the, in this 10 minutes, I, I won't really talk too much about Deep Walk uh, because the author's sitting there. But I'll, I'll try and explain why hyperbolic space is really, really interesting for this community and why perhaps all complex network embeddings should be in hyperbolic space rather than Euclidean space. But I'm assuming that not everyone is super familiar with hyperbolic space. There are, there are three types of homogeneous isotropic spaces in the world. So there's Euclidean space, which has Pythagoras' law, so one we all know very well. Then there's positively curved spherical space and then there's negatively curved hyperbolic space. It's really hard to think about hyperbolic space because it doesn't fit in flat space. So if you imagine you're standing on the surface of a sphere, every direction looks the same and every place looks the same, that's hyperbolic and isotropic. But it's really hard to imagine standing on a space that all, everywhere curves in exactly the same way negatively. It's like standing on a, a saddle, but the saddle appears at every point in space. It's a bit confusing. So hyperbolic space, if you're interested in the history of geometry, Euclid had these five postulates and mathematicians spent 2000 years trying to prove the fifth one from the first four and, and they couldn't. And then uh, some people, including Gauss, said, well, what if, we, what if we ignore what's called the parallel postulate? The idea that all lines going through a point have to cross at some point. And it turned out that there's a completely consistent geometry which emerges when you give up the parallel postulate, which is hyperbolic geometry. So in this image at the top there, all of those lines are parallel, but almost all of them pass through a single point. There's, it's a bit of a, it hurts your head a bit thinking about it, like what, what are the things you learned when you were really young still apply and which don't? All of these lines are parallel. And if you prefer knitting metaphors, it's the same idea down here. These lines pass through the same point, but they're all parallel. Uh, and the important thing, I guess, is why, why do we care? Why do graph people care about hyperbolic space? And it's because it's the, it's the continuous analog of a tree. And so hierarchy is fundamentally built into this geometry. So if we take, this is an MC Escher um, piece of art. I didn't realize, I've, I've seen this before, I didn't realize it was a representation of hyperbolic space. So in hyperbolic space, all of those stencils are the same size, but in Euclidean space, they disappear to zero because that boundary is the infinite boundary of the hyperbolic plane. And thing, things at the center of that disk are really close to everything. So um, I think Brian mentioned Justin Bieber before. Justin Bieber is really close to everyone on Twitter. So he would embed at the middle of that disk. Whereas people like me who have no friends on Twitter and no followers would be right towards the edge of the disk. And in fact, most people would be towards the edge. And so you can, you can get that hierarchical makeup of complex networks that we study without doing anything clever, just by using this geometry, it's really, really nice. And in fact, trees embed uh, isometrically. So isometry just means the distances map exactly. So here there's a tree graph, it splits in three and those two stars are six apart because you've got to go back to the root to get to, get to each other. And that's the same here because you have to basically go through the middle. That's the shortest path in this hyperbolic space. It's, it's quite confusing, but um, mo most paths go back towards the middle. And when you think about the number of leaves in a tree, that, that um, grows hyperbolically with the depth of the tree in the, by the branching factor. And the space in hyperbolic space grows exponentially. The circumference of a circle grows exponentially, not polynomially in hyperbolic space. So it really is well equipped to model these type of structures. Also, you imagine embedding a star graph in Euclidean space, two-dimensional Euclidean space, where there's maybe one hub and four things coming up the side that are all distance one from the hub. It's impossible to embed anything remotely isometrically in Euclidean space, but there's a completely isometric embedding in hyperbolic space of that simple graph. So I just nicked this directly from a Kriokov uh, physics paper where he first um, introduced this idea that complex networks have a hyperbolic geometry. If you, if you scatter points randomly, 
in Euclidean space and then draw up, join up any two points that are less than a certain distance apart, what you get is an erdos renyi random graph. And we all know that uh, the, the big graphs that we study, uh, Facebook or Twitter, they're not erdos renyi they're small world graphs, they have power law de degree distributions, and they have communities. But if you randomly scatter points in the hyperbolic disk and then join up ones that are near to each other, that's exactly what you get. You get power law degree distributions, you get communities, you get uh, small path lengths. So it's, it almost seems like magic when you do this. Uh, and it, it turns out that it's, it's really very easy to take the sort of stuff that Brian's done before and make it hyperbolic. Because in, the, in models like Skipgram, this is a, and the neural network architecture of Skipgram, not only are the updates almost entirely geometric, so you're just adding, adding and subtracting vectors from the two vector spaces in the model weighted by the errors. Uh, but also the vectors only enter in as inner products or um, through the gradient operator. And, and I just did this for two-dimensional, what's called the Poincaré disk. But it's really quite simple just to take, this is the standard skip gram thing, or actually it's even more general than that, is how I guess all of the NLP stuff starts. But the vectors just enter in as inner products. It's the only place they come into any of the maths anywhere. And so it's almost... It's almost trivial just to switch out the dot product, which the dot product gives you the Euclidean norm, which gives you Euclidean distances, and say, okay, I'm going to use the hyperbolic inner product, which gives me the hyperbolic norm, which gives me the hyperbolic distances. And suddenly you're, you're in hyperbolic space, which is, um, which is quite easy. And the only thing you need to do is just change the standard uh, grad operator from Euclidean space to be this hyperbolic operator. Uh, I'm doing this all in polar coordinates, but it doesn't have to be in polar coordinates. You can do it in Cartesian coordinates. You can do it in spherical space as well. And when, when you do this, um, so on the right is the um, Euclidean embedding of the Karate network that everyone knows. And on the left is the hyperbolic embedding. So I, I've made this kind of hard. Um, so I've, I've used very short random walks. I've not used many random walks. I know that you can, you can do the Karate network almost perfectly in Euclidean space, but I've made it very hard. So that, that's sort of what the embeddings look like. And then here is, I've taken some, I've taken five networks from Mark Newman's network sites. So none of them are particularly big. And I've compared the hyperbolic embedding performance at node classification with some labels removed, varying percentages of labels removed, against the Euclidean embeddings at two to 128 dimensions growing logarithmically like that. And overall, um, pretty much across the board, the hyperbolic embeddings perform better. And it, it's, it's simply because they, they embed isometrically. So if the distances in the graph really mean something, then it's not surprising that the fact that the vectors in the embedding space are isometric with the distances in the original graph that you get better performance at um, vertex prediction. The only reason I've only done vertex prediction, I've only done it in 2D, is basically I haven't, I haven't had time yet to do this in high dimensional space or to do it for more and varied tasks, but it, it scales in exactly the same way that word to vec scales. So you just make those two small changes that I showed you. And so realistically, it should easily scale to billions of vertices, billions of edges, just as people have done with word to vec. Cool. So I'm a little bit short, I'm a little bit under time, but I'm done.